Hi guys, today we are back for another video. We are actually going to play 10 and L on Winamax. Um, so hope you enjoyed and we will do a quick session where I will show you all the explode that you can do to completely crush this pool. And um, yeah, let's see how it goes. Uh, I did a small challenge by the way. Um, challenge consisted of playing 10K ends in 10 and L and see my win rates. I'm at like 6K ends. And um, yeah, I, I will finish it and I will publish uh, you the result after. Um, you'll be, I think, pretty surprised of what win rate you can have. So, so um, let's dive into the action. Uh, okay, so here I free bet. Um, so just to tell you, it's a high rake environment uh, when there is splash pot. So when there is no splash pot, the rake is 10%. So <laughs> obviously that's completely crazy. And that's why you don't really want to flag preflop and you are way more incentivized to play free bet or fold. Uh, you will even see some weird fold at some position. And it's because, because of the rake, um, there is ends that doesn't really make sense to open. And some of the ends were folded, but who now want to, who now want to open. Um, So let's play. I'm going to put my stacks in blind here. A 10 9 off here, that's actually loose in a normal rake environment. But given the fact we play in 10 and soon open, I will do 100% of the time. And yeah, I will always show you anyway the, the quick explore that you can do. And I will talk about it uh, through the videos. Um, Jack 9 here, I will raise against a donk, I think. It's a range not that strong, but has a lot of equity. And with nuts, I just want to raise and build the pot here. Hey, Jack, I open. He called on five, four, three. Um, I think checking is completely fine. I don't expect uh, 10 NL players to bet super often in bluff on the turn. And now with Jack, I will just check again. Now with Jack nine, I will just bet big. If now he has queen jack, uh, he's queen, uh, he will not fold. So I just want to bet to bet really big here. And if he has an like queen 10, DG, there's not much things you can do here. Uh, it's Jack here, now we can value bet and we will go for the uh, alpha sizing. I think we can get call by more ends when we do alpha than big. So the sizing is okay. And in 10, 10 and L, uh, in a non-known pool, I will open 100% of my button. And it's gonna be a great explore, especially if uh, big one is not repeating enough. And if he's not forbidding enough, you can just open like way, way more. Um, eight, five here. Or you will check on the flop. I really advise you to bet, and this will be my first advice, uh, bet all the time when you check on the flop because the checking back range is way too weak. And even now when he check backs, I can just bet like freaks the pot and he will fold everything. Uh, of course, there will be some players that call you with it, like random maze, but overall you, you can just apply a lot of pressure in these lines, and that's that will work super well. I will free bet here with uh, Jack 10 and King 10 off. It's also in that I will free bet. Um, so it's a loose free bet, but considering the fact that people don't probably enough, again, I think I will over realize my equity when I free bet because I can see the flop more often and they will not play super well. Um, post flop also. So the second advice is to be. Um, yeah, the, the second advice here is to actually limit the situation uh, because players in general, um, and that's true, on, that's also true on GG Poker, players in general just don't defend enough and don't raise enough against limps. So even if the rake is super high when they limp, I, I just think it's, it's profitable to do it because they are just not easily enough. So I advise you to limp your entire range on the small line against Arion. If you see a rake starting to isolate you their theoretical optimal frequencies, it's, it's close to 40%, then you can not limit this end, but against most players, I think I can completely do this. And now the bet sizing, I think to be called is just alpha here. And here with Jax, we are going to squeeze. Um, again, we have a lot of incentives to not be called, so my squeezing sizing will be higher in this rake environment. Just off here, I will open. As I said, I just don't expect enough pre bet from the big blinds. 
and I expect to play way better than my opponent post up. So I think every hand is maximally on the bottom. Maybe you can fall like seven deuce off, nine three off, and of course this opens depend on you your uh, skills. Um, if you're like beginner, I don't advise you to open the range on the bottom, but opening a lot makes a, a lot of coffee here. Our best move here with King Deuce. Again, I will just range C bet, and that, this will be my first third advice. Just range bet all flops. Um, of course, it's important to understand the game and how bet sizing on the flop works in theory, but against most people, um, I will over bet here with King Deuce. I will explain why. And here will four bet with Ace King. Um, Against most people, um, it's the best strategy because they just don't check raise enough, don't check all enough. And on the turn, uh, you saw pretty loose over bets. Um, it's not a thing, theoretically. But considering the fact that um, most people will completely overfold turn and river, I expect this play to be the best. So sometimes you will see me with shoulder value ends and I will just turn them into a bluff all the time because it's just working super well. And that's why my, my red line is, is insanely up. It's just because I bluff a lot and that's working really well. My, for, my first advice is to pre-bet a lot, big blinding and small blinds. Um, it's true at all stakes, honestly, um, but in 10 and you can just raise all the time when people limps and when people raise. So yeah, just at this position, be extremely aggressive. Um, so we'll be range betting, and now with uh, King Jack, we're going to bet half pot on this top. I can bet one third of sold, and both options are fine. A6 I will check now, and I think we'll call um, pretty much all, all bet sizing. And when he checks, I assume we have the best hand. Um, we need to be careful because some people will just check A6 here, but I think going for a small value bet is completely okay. And again, this will be my. Um, the advice number five, um, don't hesitate to do small bet in position on the river, because if people don't bluff raise enough, this is something you can do a lot. In theory, it's not something you really want to do, but actually just working super well uh, against the population. So I really advise you to do this. The reason is because they're not bluff raising enough and they're a bit too calling station against small bet. So don't, don't, um, don't be scared about um deviating here and that's also will be my sixth advice just play full explore like when i say full explore is don't even think about gto like once you really need to think only about exploiting poker and that's the way to go because it's a strategy that wins the most money and mistakes And with nines, uh, we will have to go here. We have 10 big blinds in the middle. Even if I, I think the 12x open range is strong, nines just to go here, um, nothing to do. Uh, call will be terrible because we really don't want to play post up with nines. Uh, and again, I expect some tens and jacks in this setting, but we, we just have to, to jump here. And he called me with King Jack. And we win. Get seven here. I uh, will not call. call. I will not feel bit extremely loose um, against my early position because I expect the range to be tight. So the situation where I free bet a lot and leave my seventh advice, advice number seven. Um, I'll check in six. Or button against cutoff, blind against small blinds, and big blind against nearly all position. And the reason is because when you're in position, people don't fall bet enough out of position. I want to check all the, because I play extremely badly post flops. They don't check raise enough flops. They don't check all enough. So just UEV of a lot of hands in trades. That's, that's why you will see me like pre bet close to 30% on the button in these limits. Queen six here. I think we all good to bet big. I don't expect too much gold here. And um, should be my eight, uh, advice number eight. When you play multi way, just bet all the time on the turn. Um, I don't really advise you to bluff flops multi way because in general, delay works extremely well because people will tend to, I will not call it all right in this sizing. 
people will tend to um i will check queen six here i think it's not a cool bluff anymore we'll have some msi but some people also fold this on the turn so i will just check fold yeah just bet extremely a lot on the turn because they are not checking too about checking strong ends out of position and they're not checking enough strong end of the flop so when you are multi-way just just bluff all the time um of course you have balls that are better to bluff river some of them only one street but just in general when you're multi-way just bluff every single end that you can bluff uh on pretty all spots i mean not all spots if you're four way it's free to flush don't fall to flush don't do this um i'm going to open big here with king queen off we have already five big lines in the middle Here against the lead, um, I don't really know exactly what is it. And against the lead, that doesn't really make sense. I will just uh, decide to make the call here with King Queen. Um, my advice number eight, number eight, yeah. My advice number eight is to be, uh, I will call again. No, I think it's just a call now. I can call this. My eighth advice is just to just playing tight against aggression uh, and don't overly value yourself. For example, here in this spot, I wanted to call King Queen because there is a lot of runouts I can bluff. But I just don't need to do this to, to, to be 10 and 10. So yeah, I just advise you to play a bit, uh, a bit tighter against aggression and just call all the time, actually. That will be one of the most important advice. Here with free force suited, I will ease up. Um, and the ninth, uh, the advice number nine here I can give you is a oh, little bit super small here. Um, the number nine advice that I can give you is that when people open 2.5 in a splash pots, um, um, the range is not strong enough and people at your left will not raise you enough because the range that have to raise uh, you against when you do 12 uh these are ends we will call um so you really need to um i will borrow the turn again he will fold and queens here will fall so um this range is not when people open 2.5 the range is not strong enough so you can just range raise range you put you put 10 to win nine so it, it needs to it doesn't need to win super often and small blind and big blinds should re-raise when you bet 10, but the thing is that the re-raising range um, is not something that happened because most players just call, for example, when they have king-jack suited or king-jack off, uh, rather than just doing re-raise in bluff. So you can be extremely aggressive. Um, uh, then the ninth advice, the advice number nine is just squeeze extremely well, a lot. Be careful against freaks open, so, um, but if you see that it's just all setting from someone, just, just do this and it will work pretty well. And yeah, just people don't raise enough um, when you squeeze, they don't fall bet enough, basically, fall bet. So, yep, and now with ACs, I will just raise, squeeze, fall bet B here. I don't like to do too small. Uh, I like to represent Ace King with this sizing. It will help me to help him to just jam Ace King and, and Queen's Plus. And if I do too small four by sizing, he can be a bit scared. And also, I don't really want him to. Um, yeah, I just wants to avoid the rake mainly because ten percent is is really insane. Um, here it's a board where I can advise you to um, bet small on the turn. Um, so we might. Tenth advice, and that's the worst card to bluff. Yeah, well, not bluff this one. This will be my uh, advice number 10. Um, don't hesitate to bet small the turn when range improve the opponent's range, because when you bet small turn, um, people will raise nuts way too often, and you can actually bluff them a lot when you bet small and bet big on the river. Um, you can also bet check, bet huge, but sometimes if we walk less because people might still play the river, but most of the time it just works extremely well to, um, to do this. So do this. 
here with King 10, um, I will check the, no, I will bet one third. Against Polo Blind, just, that's worse to bet one third range, but I guess remain is still okay. And on the turn, I will just bet uh, six here. I think it's the best sizing because I don't expect a queen to call me for you, you chasing. And it still wants to be called by nines, tens, seven, sixes. So I think going for out pots um, with his tech size is the best strategy. So with tens, um, to be honest, um, it's already extremely close. King nine should now will just jump. Um, it's like we are playing ten big blind diffs with the ten big blind flash pot in the middle. It's already close against the free betting range, um, and should be maybe even advice. It'd be extremely extremely tight against free bet. Um, now I'm pretty sure he has jacks or his king, so I don't really need to bet against this range. I'll just check and see what he does. And he check again, so I just think that I will bet for one third here. And yeah, I'm pretty confident on the fact that he has mostly his king. And he folds. And if he has a jack, for example, that's also cool too. Like he folds on equity. Um yeah, I just don't limp against reg, but um, I think it's just doable, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I didn't do it on the right table, but that, that was a mistake. Should have limped uh, all the time. Just, you will see at the beginning, um, it's always complicated to um, do something because it requires to be used to it. And of course, limping your entire range on the small line isn't something I did before, so. Um, I mean, all against fishes, but not against rex. So that's always tough. King Jack here. Uh, I will just squeeze again. Um, and I will squeeze for you chasing here. I don't expect cutoff to raise and call enough. And small blinds will call with a cap range if cutoff call and small blind call. So this will be easy to play. And he fall bet, so pretty easy fold. And the well, advice number 12, just fall all the time against four bets. I mean, fold a lot. And advice number 13, don't go ace king preflop. Um, close to all position. If it's big blind, small blind, small blind, and blue turn, that's okay. But otherwise, you really don't don't advise you to five bet bluff, I mean, five bet, five bet ace king. Here with king six, um, you can range bet this plop. You can also check and see what he does and bluff the river. And now I know that uh, most players don't have a jack super often, so I expect a massive overfall on the turn on the river. So we'll go for a big sizing. And interesting enough, he decided to raise. Um, this is weird that there seems like a jack with check backs, that, uh, which checked back. That's going to happen sometimes. And again, just Fall versus raise river. Um, fourteen advice, advice number fourteen. Just fall all the time against raise river. Um, to be honest, I think you will do less mistakes. Place always fall against raise river when you have a bluff catcher without domination on the body region, or just not just trying to make some calls. Um, that's what I can advise. Just fall all the time, and this will work well. Queen four off here. We'll just limp. Um, I will just bet on the blind. We can also check this flop. I just expect his value region to raise all the time on the flop. So I think it's about where we can apply a lot of pressure. And on the queen, I think I have the best ten, which you often. And I'll just do three quarter to be called by something. Here with the nine, I will open big. I will prepare big. Um, it's always a bit more difficult when you know that. Cut off sometimes open a stronger range when he two freaks. But without much information, I will just rebet this combo. Uh, that's not a theoretical combo you want to rebet with this amount of rake, but I just think it's completely okay to do it. Take time to do it here. I will start to fold in this tech size. Mm 
stuff here I will just open, especially when there is fishes in the small blinds and big blinds. Uh, you can just play extremely loose. So this will be my advice number 15. Um, you can just open way more um, cut off middle position and boot them when there is a fish in the big blind. Um, Well, this is eight seven three. Uh, we'll do alpha pot here. You can bet one third also. Both options are okay. Another ten. I think we have a pretty good cast to barrel here. And I will do B. And on the river, I think we can also bet on most burnouts. If it's a king on ace, I think they will overfold. And also on blanks, you will have a lot of 7, 6, 8, 9, uh, check 8. That will call the flop for the turn and for the river. I think it was a good spot to free barrel. Um, yeah, my, my, 16, my advice number 16 is to I'll fold here. Um, all the laws against check raise on the flop. And again, just it's linked to what being tight all the time. And this will work well. Um, So I say limp range, but you can also like mean raising range. I think both options are okay. Um, I think mean raising is maybe a bit better considering the rake in this table. So yeah, just limp or mean raising on the small line against anybody. Of course, if you have a good end, you can open a standard sizing. Again, most guys prefer to do it this way. I will open big here with I do soft. I expect people to be too tight in splash pot. So I think opening range here makes a ton of money. And with fives, again, I will but extremely big and even if people call it enough i expect a lot of um, tight plays for stop so it will be okay to free bets super loose here it's not enough here i will decide to open he decided to call um and my, my advice number 17 um it's 17, is to be careful about timing. Uh, even if it's not so important at these stakes, it can actually make you win a lot of money. The reason is because it takes preflop. That means he doesn't have an easy call because easy call tends to call way more faster. Of course, he can play. He can just play a table. Um, but in general, also post up, the timing tail will be accurate. It took time to be good at it, but I strongly advise you to start looking for it and in fives now um expect most people to overfold against on barrel still for now queen jack all the eight eight sevens nine eight cents ace queen suited um i don't really care about making full ace queen suited when you have fives but i just expect to make for a lot of fans and on the river um and that will be my advice number 18 um don't free barrel all the time, especially in free bed pot, because the problem is, of course, you can put a lot of pressures, but if you play against a guy that just fall too much on the turn, the river range is way too strong. And here, I think it's the case, so I will just check. There is only like three combos, six combos of King 10, King Jack, can it fall, and he has all the sixes, nines, King, Queen, Ace, King. So um, yeah, I think this end is just played correctly. We can also maybe check the turn and, and bet the river, but. I think second barreling is okay, so be careful about free barrel and free bet pots. And we can, I will go for the small value bet here. And he fold. Okay. It's eight, so as I said, you can just use the delay here and turn on this flop. But I think it's. Uh, about when you can actually one third range and it's going to work really well. Uh, when balls are less dry, uh, I will prefer to check a bit more on the flop. But on this flop, we have a lot of all equity, so I will just bet everything. And they say it doesn't have as much shadow value as you think, so I think betting is completely okay. Queen four, um, that's a close call, but again, I will just advise you to be a bit more loose when, for, for example, someone limps you on these small blinds and you want to complete. 
uh, this, the, the blind are, for example, in this situation. And the reason is because I expect most players to overfold a lot facing aggression in two-way spots. So um, yeah, I would just open way, way loser. Queen eight seven, same story here. I will just bluff this in. And the reason is because even if it, um, it has been some benefits to check back, I expect people to fall so much that actually, I think the EV of the bets is higher with with all your bluffs, include bluff this like this. When I stand suited here, I will bet on the flop again. I think it's definitely a bold way you can delay also. Buff options are completely okay. And here I will, I'll say to check without the backer for draw, but I think buff options are completely fine. With queen four here in splash pot, as I already say, I advise you to open way loser. And yeah, I say easel, but I didn't say way, so that, that would be my my advice number 20. Um, open way more in splash pots when you are late positions, because um, players, Bhutan, small blinds, big blind will never raise you, as I said before. And also because post stops, they will play extremely bad in this kind of SPR. So it's what I advise you. And I will stand. Um, fortunately, we need to fall. Some players will never have a queen in this sizing, but when I'm not too sure, I just prefer to play um, the most certain play. Um, and to play with the least uncertainty, and that's only my advice number 21. Um, you need to play with the, your level of certainty, that's super important. And the reason is because if you do too much fancy play um, and creative play, that can probably cost you a lot of money. And I don't say that you have to be not creative. That just means that you have to be a bit more careful with the things you do that you don't really um, know, for example. So. Yeah, just play more standards and just apply a plan. That's what we made, 22, advice number 22, and my final advice. You have to follow a plan, and that's super important. So you can either write it. For example, you can write everything I share in this video and try for the next session to apply it. Uh, that would be a cool thing. And here we're asking, we have a super exception that I will take, but I don't really advise you to take this spot if you're not sure. But I know that nobody raised a queen here, so I can, I can just jump profitably. And the number of queenies in his range will be so rare that I actually think we just make a huge amount of money. Because if he never has queenies, it's either a bluff or flush draws, and actually a bit flush draws. So, yeah. But don't focus too much about the spot on the left because honestly, it's a really rare exception. And yeah, I just prefer to not show this type of stuff because it's extremely rare why you need to do this. But we are playing a, a spot where. I assume most players never raise the queen. Uh, and if it's the case, I just win a lot by jamming because keys are fold or call first draw, so it's okay. And even if you play a queen, a queen sometimes this way, um, that's that should be completely fine. Here we have nine with a uh, open big in, in the multi-way spots. Uh, be careful and not value cutting yourself. Um, I'm advising number 23. Uh, and here with Ace 9, I still think that betting is profitable. Um, so I will bet on the flop here. It's really because we're on a splash pot. If it wasn't a splash pot, I would not really bet Ace 9. And everyone's full, so that's great. Um, so hope you enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to subscribe, that's really important. And see you for the next one. Bye, guys.